thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen, for the invitation. And uh, uh, at the moment, as you all know, uh, I'm functioning as the police media spokesman. Uh, I have been in the media field for a period of almost 11 years now since 2010. So every time uh, when an accident happened and uh, uh, deaths uh, are reported, so I uh, express our views and the details of the accidents to the media for a period of 11 years. And apart from that, uh, uh, I function as the DIG traffic for a period of one and a half years uh, in year 2018 and 2019. Uh, so first of all, I would like to express the statistics in respect of accidents in our country, uh, because I am uh, not going to take uh, examples in respect of the accidents happened in 2020, because uh, I mean, approximately eight months uh, the country had been closed, so therefore uh, we cannot get uh, statistics and accidents uh, uh, never happened. However, if I, if, if I analyze the accident data since uh, 2009 to 2019, uh, almost for a period of 11 years, approximately uh, 40,000 accidents, uh, I mean, are reported to police. So I emphasize the word reported. 40,000, approximately 40,000 accidents are reported to the police. So accordingly, uh, approximately 3,000 persons are killed in road traffic accidents annually. 15 to, to 15,000 to 20,000 persons are injured. But according to the, the statistics of insurance companies in our country, approximately 500,000 accidents uh, are reported, but I mean, all the accidents are not reported to the police. Now we have uh, amended uh, the certain provisions of the Motor Traffic Act, but uh, again, a gasset notification should be published. Uh, it has been drafted. So uh, once uh, it is uh, the, the, the gasset is published, so every and each person should report to police, I mean, by filling that particular form electronically or manually, then they should not uh, go to police station and they are not loitering at police station, but they should report that particular accident. Even it's a very minor, uh, slight accident. Uh, the law has been because otherwise we can get the, uh, the correct uh, standard of accidents. Uh, first of all, I would like to mention about the legal provisions uh, in respect of uh, motor vehicles. Uh, uh, as you all know, ladies and gentlemen, the first motor vehicle was brought to Sri Lanka in 1905. And from 1905 to 1938, almost, uh, almost for, a, for, a, for a period of 33 years, uh, uh, we didn't have a specific legal enactment uh, for uh, uh, motor vehicles because very less motor vehicles, registered motor vehicles in the country. And uh, there was a regulation promulgated by the minister or the governor. So according to that regulation, the motor vehicles were moved. So that was the law, but it was, we, we didn't have any ordinance, any act or any enactment passed by the parliament. However, the British rulers first time, uh, first time in 1938, uh, motor traffic ordinance was introduced. Uh, it, it is the first legal enactment. So we had uh, several ad hoc, uh, ad hoc documents, but first legal enactment in respect of motor traffic vehicles was uh, introduced in 19. 38 by the British rulers. However, it was a, 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 a copy of the Mod Traffic uh, Act that was in existence in the United Kingdom. Within a period of 13 years, 13 years, this ordinance was repealed and a new act was introduced by our parliament after the independence in 1951. So that is called Motor Traffic Act, Act number 14 of 1951. 
So the existing law in the country, the contemporary law in respect of motor vehicles in the country is the law that was introduced by our parliament in 1951. The act has been amended for a period of 21, for a, uh, for a period of uh, almost uh, uh, 70 years and 21 times it has been uh, amended. So uh, the latest amendment came in 2019 and before that 2017 and uh, an important amendment was brought to the principal enactment in 2009 uh, and 19 and 1984 so this is the law in the country but however though we have introduced several laws we have we have conducted several awareness programs so regularly regularly it is sad to say that the deaths in respect of motor accidents is being increased. And apart from that, the, the injured persons, the number of injured persons are also increased. So what is the what is the reason? So what, what is the reason? So we need to uh, we need to get some sort of idea about analyzing the victims and the accident data. So as the police media spokesman, so regularly uh, I go through our police reports, situation reports uh, by 4.30 in the morning. So 4.30 in the morning and according to the situation report today, nine, per, nine deaths had been reported, reported during the period of last 24 hours. Last week, last Thursday, not, not, not uh, uh, day before yesterday, last Thursday, 15 deaths had been reported. 15 deaths had been reported for a period of 24, 24 hours. And last Friday, 13 de deaths had been reported in respect of more traffic accidents. So this is the, I mean, it's a very pathetic situation. So what are the reasons? If we analyze the, the vehicle population in the country, when the more traffic ordinance, ordinance was enacted, more traffic act was enacted in 1951, we had only, we had only 80,000 vehicles. We had only 80,000 vehicles. But today, after 70 years, 1951 to 2021, our vehicle population is 83 lakhs. Or otherwise, uh, 8.3 million. 8.3 million vehicle population. So accordingly, I mean... The, the vehicle population has been increased rapidly. So accordingly, parallelly, proportionately, whether the infrastructure, has it been developed? So that is the question. Now, if we, if we analyze the, the data, I, 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 I mentioned you 15 deaths reported uh, reported uh, on the, I, I think it is on the 4th, uh, 4th of March, then the victims, the, the, the deceased, nine deceased were motorcycle riders and four were pedestrians and two persons, two persons, one three-wheeler driver and the other one is a paddle cyclist. So it means the, the, the statistics show that who are the victims? The victims are the majority, majority number is motorcycle riders or the pillion riders, then the, the pedestrians who walk on the road, so they are, and apart from that, uh, the, the paddle cyclists, paddle cyclists and the persons who go on three wheelers. So they are the victims, but the people who are on board in bigger vehicles like buses, lorries. So, I mean, hardly they are becoming victims. So, I mean, time occasionally accidents are reported, but the majority are motorcycle riders, pillion riders and pedestrians. So that is the situation in the country. So what are the actions that we need to take? So number one, number one, and as you all know, there is a saying, English saying, the prevention is better than cure. So what are the preventive actions that we could take? Uh, especially uh, we, if we analyze the, the vehicle population, 8.3 million, so 50, 56% of 
uh, 8.3 million is motorcycles. It means approximately in our country, 57, 57 lakhs, 5.7 million motorcycles are available. And 16% out of the total amount, 8.3 million vehicle population is three wheelers. It means approximately 16 lakhs, 1.6 million uh, uh, three wheelers are available in the country. So it is the very common vehicle. So therefore, uh, the, the majority of the people, they move on motorcycles and three wheelers. So they becoming victims. So number one, what I need, what I need to emphasize is that we need to conduct awareness programs, but not only awareness, awareness includes the, the, I mean, issuing license also. Now there are countries, especially some, I have experience as a police officer, uh, I mean, uh, especially in Scandinavian countries. So it is very difficult to get a driving license. So you have to follow various procedures. So now here in Sri Lanka, this pro the, the existing procedure should be modified and uh, it should be, I mean, um, uh, uh, I mean, sorry to say, say this word, it should be a deterrent one. So therefore, uh, we can avoid the accident. That is number one. So number two, so uh, when, uh, especially when we are conducting uh, uh, operations, traffic operations, so there are people, especially by using the internet, social media, so they are cultivating various types of, I mean, misconceptions in the minds of the general public. So as you all know, we have been empowered by the law, the Sri Lanka police have been empowered by the law to uh, enforce the traffic law. Now people all the time, so sometimes uh, if a police officer is asking a driving license, so there are plenty of resistance sometimes. So sometimes they don't care police officers. And I, I am not going to I'm watch the, the police activities. I know that the minority police officers, uh, so they are getting bribes. Then they don't know, I mean, how to talk to general public. They use some uh, uh, bad words also. Yeah, so it is 10%. But majority, majority uh, of them, uh, I mean, they have been trained on various, uh, various uh, 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 courses and apart from that uh, traffic law, not only traffic law, ethics, customs, traditions, everything, but uh, so that misconception is there because all the time, so drivers, the majority of them, so they think that the traffic police corps are their enemies. So this misconception should be eradicated. So therefore, uh, on our side, we have we, we, we have taken several steps, but on the other hand, all the stakeholders, I think all the stakeholders are uh, on the webinar, so their support uh, and cooperation uh, is needed. And in addition to that, uh, about traffic laws. So people are spreading rumors, even not only, not only the, the ordinary people, some intellectuals also, they come to the media and they say, say that a single police officer cannot detect a traffic case it is absolutely wrong. In terms of the provisions of the section 134 of the evidence ordinance, so they, that particular section, section says that to prove a case, so it is not limited to, uh, I mean, uh, it is not required a number of witnesses to prove that case. It means even what we, one witness is enough. So if uh, now I saw a, 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 a video footage and apart from that, uh, social media messages that if a single police officer is on the road, so don't give your license, so don't uh, don't uh, uh, obey with his signals and all these things because he cannot detect anything. It is absolutely wrong. Uh, that misconce misconception had been inculcated everywhere elsewhere by various parties. So on the uh, the 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 next question is uh, uh, sometimes when we are going to implement the law, enforce the law, so uh, uh, the people, they resist. Then they are after, what they do is, they, I mean, get uh, videos and video footages are published against the police activity. But as you all know, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, uh, 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 
Mr. Mahalagamu mentioned about the police uh, strength. Yes, approximately 9,000 police officers are deployed regularly in order to uh, enforce uh, traffic duties uh, in three shifts. Uh, morning shift from 6 to uh, 2 or, 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 or 7 to uh, 3, then they are after in the evening shift and night. But sometimes, especially uh, in the Colombo city, uh, poli the, uh, a police constable who uh, comes to the road by 5 o'clock in the morning and he'll be remaining uh, in the road for a period of all, sometimes uh, 14 or 15 hours, uh, 15 hours. So, uh, they have been instructed to detect cases. They have been instructed to instructed to deal with uh, indisciplined drivers. So therefore, they stop vehicles. They check uh, driving license. They check uh, uh, revenue license. So therefore, they are enforcing the law. Uh, but if you go to other country, uh, but people generally they are very friendly with police. And apart from that, uh, they I mean, if a police officer is asking driving license, they show it. And they obey with the instructions, but here plenty of resistance occur regularly. So they are then the finally the police are not the victims of road traffic accidents. The victim are the general general public. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, I would like to uh, draw you. I would like to draw your attention uh, to uh, uh, the world statistics. Uh, uh, if uh, according to the WHO, uh, I mean, statistics, 1.3 million people uh, are killed in road traffic accidents annually. And apart from that, it means in every 25 seconds, a person is killed in road traffic accident. So now uh, 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 the, the best practices, according to the statistics, the WHO or, or, or many countries, they have adopted various uh, methodologies or various strategies in order to curtail road traffic accidents. So the, the best strategy that I have ever experienced is demerit mark system. Demerit mark system. Uh, uh, initially, this demerit mark, mark concept was introduced by uh, our legislation in 1984, then thereafter it was reintroduced in, nine, in 2009 amended act and again 2017 and 2019 uh, amendments elaborated the concept. Uh, our law is there. Now we have a law in respect of demerit mark system. So this is the best system. I mean, according to my experience, now I am a police officer with uh, 30 years of experience. So according to my experience, so I have visited uh, uh, several police organizations all over the world. And so this is the best option, but it is not 100% successful, but uh, this is the best tool that we can utilize in order to uh, prevent road traffic accident. So there is a marking system. If a person, let's say, if a person starts from Colombo, he is going for Candy, uh, 118 kilometers. So if we cut the cut the line at Paliagoda, uh, a police officer is there, he is given a spot fine and apart from that, the marks are entered uh, to the system, then he is uh, getting eight marks, demerit marks. Then again, in Nittambu, if he is passing uh, the, the Nittambu junction against uh, the traffic lights, red lights, then again he earns another eight marks. So if he has committed uh, three offenses, uh, when he's reaching candy, so his license is automatically uh, cancelled. Or oh, within a period of one year, if a person has earned 22 marks according to the uh, the proposed system, his uh, his driving license is suspended. So uh, the many countries have adopted this system, and we have the laws, regulations, so everything is uh, there. But uh, our infrastructure has not been developed yet yet and we are in the process of developing that system. There were many discussions and especially um, uh, earlier we were under the Ministry of Defense. Now uh, we have a, a, a separate ministry called Ministry of Public Security and our minister, our secretary, uh, I mean, we, um, we are having a dis discussion in order to uh, introduce this system as early as possible along with the transport ministry. So that is the best option. I believe that uh, uh, 
uh, we can introduce demerit mark system. Uh, the police scope who is uh, who is on the road is having that particular instrument. So once the driving license is inserted inserted into the instrument, so the police scope can uh, see uh, the, the the merit the demerit marks how many demerit marks that he has earned. Then uh, it is the best system. And apart from that, uh, we have an idea now. The whole Colombo city has been covered by CCTV cameras. We have. Uh, approximately 150 CCTV cameras covering all Colombo city and we monitor the situation. Uh, though it's, uh, it is the biggest city in the country, we are having less accidents in the, within the Colombo city uh, because of the CCTV camera system and all the times our radio cars are uh, being operated. So um, we have our control center in Peta area. So the, all the, every time our police corps, they are monitoring the vehicle movements in the Colombo city. If there is a road, if there is a block there, or uh, if a person is uh, disobeying road rules and regulations, so they inform the, the nearest radio car where that particular indisciplined driver is, uh, is uh, driving. Then uh, we can rush to the scene and we can, uh, detect the case so that system is there but it is it it is uh, only in the colombo city so our idea is to develop that particular system into other major cities and apart from that uh, other uh, remote roads also because the because according to uh, our statistics uh, the vulnerable uh, provinces are uh, uh, western province southern province central province and uh, uh, northwestern province so the, the majority number of accidents are reported from these uh, four provinces. So therefore, at least we need to have surveillance system uh, along with cameras. So therefore, uh, uh, we need to change the law. Now, according to our law, we can use CCTV footages to prove uh, uh, accidents and uh, to, to uh, uh, it is admissible in court of law, but we cannot send uh, spot fines. Um, uh, I mean, for the cases detected by cameras, so manually police officers should uh, get those cases, uh, or otherwise the police officer should uh, utilize CCTV footages along with their uh, own notes. But uh, we need to change the uh, we need to change the uh, the law also in respect of uh, CCTV uh, detections. So that is number two. Number one, demerit mark system, CCTV. And apart from that, constant uh, awareness programs. Uh, and all the times, uh, so drivers uh, uh, should obey with road rules and regulations. Uh, in year 2019, we had detected 100,000 uh, drunk driving cases. But uh, I mean, though we have detected 100,000 uh, drivers, drunk drivers, so it is not the exact, uh, I mean, the. The, the correct uh, amount. Uh, it doesn't mean that only 100,000 drivers drove vehicles in year 2019 in the country having consumed liquor, but th that is the detected number. Uh, the actual number might be sometimes 10 or 20 million. So that is the de detected number. And apart from that, uh, we are in the pr process of developing a system to detect persons who consume drugs, heroin, uh, ganja or any other drugs. Now uh, we are testing the instrument. So we have breathalyzer test for uh, 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 alcohol, uh, I mean, for drunk drivers, but uh, we, we are not uh, still implementing this drug test system, but the regulation is being drafted. And apart from that, we are testing some instrument. So we are going to implement it. And apart from that, uh, finally, uh, but the Sri Lanka police is uh, going to develop the capacity of traffic police officers. Uh, we have uh, the, the incumbent IGP has uh, increased the reward system in, in respect of traffic police officers, especially drunk driving cases. Then they are motivated, they are stimulated, but all the time we have instructed them to not to harass uh, the innocent drivers, but to detect cases to ensure the uh, the road safety. So I think uh, uh, I'm, I was able to say uh, something about uh, the police perspectives and uh, uh, especially we are hoping to implement this demerit mark system, uh, I mean, shortly 
uh, then I believe that uh, we would be able to curtail 50% of accidents. Thank you.